द सर्पेंट पावर बाय आर्थर एवलॉन चैप्टर फोर मंत्रा रेफरेंस इज मेड इन द टेक्स्ट एंड इन दिस इंट्रोडक्शन टू शब्द वर्ण मंत्रा इट इज सेड दैट द लेटर्स वर्ण ऑफ द अल्फाबेट आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थ्रू आउट द बॉडीली सेंटर्स ऑन द पेटल्स ऑफ द लोटस एज इज शोन इन ईच ऑफ द लोटस देर इज ऑल्सो ए सीड मंत्रा बीजा ऑफ द तत्व ऑफ द सेंटर कुंडलिनी इज बोथ लाइट ज्योतिर्मयी एंड मंत्र मंत्रमयी एंड मंत्र इज यूज इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ रउजिंग हर देर इज परहैप्स नो सब्जेक्ट इन द इंडियन इंडियन शास्त्र विच इज लेस अंडरस्टूड दैन मंत्र द सब्जेक्ट इज सो इंपॉर्टेंट ए पार्ट ऑफ द तंत्र शास्त्र दट इट्स अदर टाइटल इज मंत्र शास्त्र कॉमनली ओरिएंटलिस्ट एंड अदर्स डिस्क्राइब मंत्र एज प्रेयर फॉर्मूला ऑफ वर्शिप मिस्टिक सिलेबल्स एंड सो फोर्थ मंत्र साइंस मे बी वेल फाउंडेड और नॉट बट इवन इन द लेटर केस इट इज नॉट द एबसर्डिटी विच सम सपोज इट टू बी दोज हु थिंक सो माइट एक्सेप्ट मंत्रास विच आर प्रेयर्स and the meaning of which they understand for with prayer they are familiar but such appreciation itself shows a lack of understanding there is nothing necessary holy or powerful about a mantra there is nothing necessarily holy or prayerful about a mantra mantra is a power mantra shakti which lends itself impartially to any use a man may be injured or killed by mantra by mantra a kind of union with the physical shakti is by some said to be affected by mantra in the initiation called veda diksha there is such a transference of power from the guru to the disciple that the later swoons under the impulse of it by mantra the homa fire may end according to ideal conditions should be lighted by mantra man is saved and so forth mantra in short is a power shakti power in the form of sound the root man means to think the creative power of thought is now receiving increasing acceptance in the west thought reading thought transference hypnotic suggestion magnetic projection mokshasana and shields grahana are becoming known and practiced not always with good results the doctrine is ancient in india and underlies the practices to be found in the tantras some of which are kept in general concealed to prevent misuse what however is not understood in the west is the particular form of thought science which is mantra vidya those familiar with western presentment of similar subjects will more readily understand when i say that according to the indian doctrine here described thought like mind of which it is the operation is a power or shakti it is therefore as real as outer material objects both are projections of the creative thought of the world thinker the root man which means to think is also the root of the sanskrit word for man who alone of all creative creation is properly a thinker mantra is the manifested sabda brahma but what is a sabda or sound here the shakta tantra shastra follows the mimamsha doctrine of shabda with such modifications as are necessary to adapt it to its doctrine of shakti sound shabda which is a quality guna of ether akasha and is scented by hearing is twofold namely lettered varnatmak varnatmaka shabda and unlettered or dhvani dhvaniyatmaka shabda the latter is caused by the striking of two things together and is meaningless shabda on the contrary which is anahata a term applied to the heart lotus is that brahman sound which is not caused by the striking of two things together lettered sound is composed of sentences vakya words pada and letters varna such sound has a meaning shabda manifesting as speech is said to be eternal this the 
nayayika sadinai saying that it is transitory a word is uttered and it is gone this opinion the mimamsa denies saying that the perception of lettered sound must be distinguished from lettered sound itself perception is due to dhvani caused by the striking of the air in contact with the vocal organs namely the throat palate and tongue before there is a dhvani there must be the striking of one thing against another it is not the mere striking which is the lettered shabda this manifests it the lettered sound is produced by the formation of the vocal organs in contact with air which formation is in response to the mental movement or idea which by the will thus seeks outward expression in audible sound it is this perception which is transitory for the dhvani which manifests ideas in language is such but lettered sound as it is in itself is eternal it was not produced at the moment it was perceived it was only manifested by the dhvani it existed before as it exists after such manifestation just as a jar in a dark room which is revealed by a flash of lightning is not then produced nor does it cease to exist on its ceasing to be perceived through the disappearance of its manifester the lightning the air in contact with the vocal cords reveals a sound in the form of the letters of the alphabets and their combinations in words and sentences the letters are produced for hearing by the effect of the person desiring to speak and become audible to the ear of others through the operation of unlettered sound or dhvani the later being a manifester only lettered shabda is something other than its manifester before describing the nature of shabda in its different forms of development it is necessary to understand the indian psychology of perception at each moment the jiva is subject to innumerable influences which from all quarters of the universe pour upon him only those reach his consciousness which attract his attention and are thus selected by his manas the later attends to one or other of these sense impressions and conveys it to the buddhi when an object ardha is presented to the mind and perceived the later is formed into the shape of the object perceived this is called a mental vritti modification which it is the object of yoga to suppress the mind as a vritti is thus a representation of the outer object but in so far as it is such representation it is as much an object as the outer one the later that is the physical object is called the gross object sthula ardha and the former or mental impression is called the subtle object sukshma ardha but besides the object there is the mind which perceives it it follows that the mind has two aspect, aspects in one of which it is the perceiver and in the other the perceived in the form of the mental formation which in creation precedes its outer projection and after the creation follows as the impression produced in the mind by the sensing of a gross physical object the mental impression and the physical object exactly correspond for the physical object is in fact but a projection of the cosmic imagination though it has the same reality as the mind has no more and no less the mind is thus both cognizer grahaka and cognized grahya revealer prakashaka and revealed prakashya denoter vachaka and denoted vachya when the mind perceives an object it is transformed into the shape of that object so the mind which thinks of the divinity which it worships ishta deva is at length through continued devotion transformed into the likeness of that devata by allowing the devata thus to occupy the mind for long it becomes as pure as the devata this is a functional principle of tantric sadhana or religious practice the object perceived is called artha a term which comes from the root re which means to get to know to enjoy artha is that which is known and which therefore is an object of 
enjoyment the mind as artha that is in the form of the mental impression is a reflection of the outer object or gross artha as the outer object is artha so is the interior subtle mental form which corresponds to it that aspect of the mind which cognizes is called shabda or nama name and that aspect in which it is its own object or cognized is called artha or rupa form the other physical object of which the later is in the individual an impression is also artha or rupa and spoken speech is the outer shabda subject and object are thus from the mantra aspect shabda and artha terms corresponding to the vedic nama and rupa or concepts and concepts objectified as the vedanta says the whole creation is nama and rupa mind is the power shakti the function of which is to distinguish and identify bheda samsarga vritti shakti just as the body is causal subtle and gross so is shabda of which there are four stages bhava called para pashyanti madhyama and vaikhari terms further explained in coming sections para sound is that which exists of the differentiation of the mahabindu before actual manifestation this is motionless called shabda in kundalini in the mooladhara center of the body that aspect of it in which it commences to move with a general that is non particularized motion saman samanya samanya spanda is pashyanti whose place is from the mooladhara to the manipura chakra the next center it is here associated with manas these represent the motionless and first moving ishvara aspect of shabda madhyama sound is associated with buddhi it is hiranya garbha shabda hiranya garbha rupa extending from pashyanti to the heart both madhyama sound which is the inner naming by the cognitive aspect of mental movement as also its ardha or subtle sukshma object ardha belong to the mental or subtle body sukshma or linga sharira perception is dependent on distinguishing and identification in the perception of an object that part of the mind which identifies and distinguishes or the cognizing part is subtle shabda and that part of it which takes the shape of the object a shape which corresponds with the outer thing is subtle artha the perception of an object is thus consequent on the simultaneous functioning of the mind in its twofold aspect as shabda and artha which are in in indissoluble relation with one another as cognizer grahaka and cognized grahya both belong to the subtle body in creation madhyama shabda first appeared at that moment there was no outer artha then the cosmos mind projected this inner madhyama artha into the world of sensual experience and named it in spoken speech vaikhari shabda the last or vaikhari shabda is uttered speech developed in the throat issuing from the mouth this is virat shabda vaikhari shabda is therefore language or gross lettered sound its corresponding artha is the physical or gross object which language denotes this belongs to the gross body sthula sharira madhyama shabda is mental movement or ideation in its cognitive aspect and madhyama artha is the mental impression of the gross object the inner thought movement in its aspect as shabdardha and considered both in its knowing aspect shabda and as the subtle known object artha belong to the subtle body sukshma sharira the cause of these two is the first general movement towards a particular ideation ideation pashyanti from the motionless cause para shabda and supreme speech two forms of inner or hidden speech causal and subtle accompanying mind movement thus precede and lead up to spoken language the inner forms of ideating movement constitute the subtle and the uttered sound the gross aspect of mantra which is the manifested shabda brahma 
द ग्रॉस शब्द कॉल्ड वाइखरी और अटर्ड स्पीच एंड द ग्रॉस अर्था और द फिजिकल ऑब्जेक्ट डिनोटेड बाय दैट स्पीच आर द प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ द सटिल शब्द एंड अर्था थ्रू द इनिशियल एक्टिविटी ऑफ द शब्द ब्रह्मन इन टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ग्रॉस सेंशुअल परसेप्शन देर फोर इन द ग्रॉस फिजिकल वर्ल्ड शब्द मीन्स लैंग्वेज दैट इज सेंटेंसेस वर्ड्स एंड लेटर्स विच आर द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ आइडियाज एंड आर मंत्रास इन द सटल और मेंटल वर्ल्ड मध्यमा शब्द इज द माइंड विच नेम्स इन इट्स एस्पेक्ट एज कॉग्नाइजर एंड अर्ध इज द सेम अर्ध इज द सेम माइंड इन इट्स एस्पेक्ट एज द मेंटल ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इट्स कॉग्निशन इट इज डिफाइंड टू बी द आउटर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द माइंड इट इज दस सिमिलर टू द स्टेट ऑफ ड्रीम्स स्वप्न एज परा शब्द इज द कॉजल ड्रीमलेस सुषुप्ति एंड वाइकरी द वेकिंग जागृत स्टेट मेंटल अर्धा इज ए संस्कार एंड इंप्रेशन लेफ्ट ऑन द सटल बॉडी बाय प्रीवियस एक्सपीरियंस व्हिच इज रिकॉल्ड व्हेन द जीवा री अवेक्स टू वर्ल्ड एक्सपीरियंस एंड रिकलेक्ट द एक्सपीरियंस टेम्पररीली लॉस्ट टेम्पररीली लॉस्ट इन द कॉस्मिक ड्रीमलेस स्टेट सुषुप्ति विच इज डिजोल्यूश डिजोल्यूशन महाप्रलय वॉट इज इट which arouses this samskara as an effect karya it must have a cause karana this karana is the sabda or name nama subtle or gross corresponding to that particular artha when the word ghata is uttered this invo this evokes in the mind the image of an object a jar just as the presentation of this object does in the hiranyagarbha state shabda as samskara worked to evoke mental images the whole is the shabda and artha that is name and form nama roopa these two are inseparably associated there is no shabda without artha or artha without shabda the greek word logos also means thought and word combined there is thus a double line of creation shabda and artha ideas and language together with their objects speech as that which is heard or the other manifestation of shabda stands for the shabda creation the artha creation as the inner and outer objects seen by the mental or physical vision from the cosmic creative standpoint the mind comes first and from it is evolved the physical world according to the ripened samskaras which lead to the existence of the particular existing universe therefore the mental artha precedes the physical artha which is an evolution in gross in gross matter of the former this mental state corresponds to that of dreams swapna which man which man lives in the mental world only after creation which is the waking jagrat state there is for the individual an already existing parallelism of names and objects uttered speech is an is a manifestation of the inner naming or thought this thought movement is similar in men of all races when an englishman or an indian thinks of an object the image is to both the same whether evoked by the object itself or by the utterance of its name perhaps for this reason a thought reader whose cerebral center is on rapport with that of another may read the hidden speech that is the thought of one whose spoken speech he cannot understand thus while the thought movement is similar in all men the expression of it as vaikari shabda differs according to tradition there was once a universal language according to the biblical account this was so because the confusion of tongues at the tower of babel nor is this unlikely when we consider that difference in gross speech is due to difference of races evolved in the course of time if the instruments by and condi- if the instruments by and conditions under which thought is revealed in speech were the same for all men then there would be put one language but now this is not so racial characteristics and physical conditions such as the nature of the vocal organs climate inherited impressions and so forth differ 
therefore so also does language but for each particular man speaking any particular language the uttered name of any object is the gross expression of his inner thought movement it evokes that movement and again expresses it it evokes the idea and it evokes the idea and the idea is consciousness as mental operation that operation can be so intensified as to be itself creative this is mantra chaitanya from the above account it will be understood that when it is said that the letters are in the six bodily chakras it is not to be supposed that it is intended to absurdly affirm that the letters as written shape or as the uttered sounds which are heard by the ear are there the letters in this sense that is as gross things are manifested only in speech and writing this must be clear this much is clear but the precise significance of this statement is a matter of great difficulty there is in fact no subject which presents more difficulties than mantra vidya whether considered generally or in relation to the particular matter in hand in the first place one must be constantly on guard against falling into a possible trap namely the taking of prescribed methods of realization for actualities in the common sense of that term the former are conventional the later are real doubts on this matter are increased by some variations in the descriptive accounts thus in some ganesha is the devata of the mooladhara in the text here translated it is brahma similarly this text gives dakini in the mooladhara as the devata of the asti dhatu bony substance when sitting in the prescribed asana posture the bones are gathered up around this chakra and are moreover from it as the center of the body the bones run up and downwards another account however given to me places devi shakini here mistakes have also to be reckoned with and can only be ascertained and rectified by a comparison of several mss um it's given here mss means thus in the text given me from which i quote the four letters of the mooladhara are given as v s s and l the later should according to other accounts be s okay again four letters are said to be on the petals of the mooladhara lotus namely v s s and s why are these said to be there various statements have been made to me as there are certain letters which are ascribed to each form of sensitive matter bhuta it seems obvious to suggest that the earth letters parthiva varna are in the earth center but an examination on this basis does not bear the suggestion out next it is said that the letters have colors and the letters of a particular color are allotted to the lotus of the same color the text does not support this theory it has been said that certain letters derive from certain devatas but the letters produce the devata for these are the artha of mantra as sabda i have been also told that the letters are placed according to their seat of pronunciation ucharana but it is replied that the mooladhara is the common source of this ucharana sthana for all again it is said that the letters on the petals are bijas or seed mantras of all activities kriya connected with the tatva of the center each letter undergoing variations according to the vowels all beings in prithvi arth tatva should be meditated upon in the mooladhara here are therefore as we might expect the organs of feet padendriya the action of walking gamana kriya smell gandha the quality of prithvi the sense of smell ghrana nivritti kala and brahma lord of the tatva but we are also told that, that the letters 
व स स एंड स आर द आत्मा एंड बीजस ऑफ द फोर वेदास आई माइट हैव स्पेल्ड द लेटर्स रॉन्ग प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी फॉर दैट ऑफ द फोर युगास ऑफ द फोर ओशंस विच आर देयर फोर कॉल्ड चतुर्वर्णात्मका और इन द सेल्फ ऑफ द फोर लेटर्स इट इज ट्रू दैट द फोर वेदास आर इन एंड इश्यू फ्रॉम पराशप्ता द सीट ऑफ विच इज द मूलाधारा फॉर वेदा इन इट्स प्राइमरी सेंस इज द वर्ड एज आइडिया इन द माइंड ऑफ द क्रिएटिव ब्रह्मन पोर्शंस ऑफ विच हैव बीन रिवील्ड टू द ऋषीज एंड एम्बॉडीड इन द फोर वेदास बट वाई शुड व बी द सीड ऑफ द ऋग वेदा शाह ऑफ द यजुर्वेदा एंड सो फोर्थ द रिचुअल एक्सप्लेनेशन इज गिवेन इन द रुद्रयामल इज दैट द पेटल व इज ब्रह्म दट इज रजोगुणा एंड इज द बीज ऑफ ऋक शाह इज विष्णु सत्वगुणा एंड श बीइंग पुंडरी कात्मा इज द बीज ऑफ यजुस स श इज रुद्र तमोगुण एंड इज द बीज ऑफ सामा स इज द बीज ऑफ अथर्वा एंड इट इज द बीज ऑफ शक्ति दीज फोर आर इन पर शब्द इन मूलाधारा इट सीम्स टू मी एज फार एज माय स्टडीज इन द शास्त्र हैव येट कैरीड मी दैट द डिटेल्स ऑफ द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द सेंटर्स आर ऑफ टू काइंड्स they are first certain facts of objective and universal reality thus for example there are certain centers chakra in the spinal cord column these the principle of solidity prithvi tatva is in the lowest of each lowest of such centers which as the center of the body contains the static or potential energy called kundalini shakti the center as a lotus is said to have four petals because of the formation of the distribution of the yoga nerves nadis at that particular point solidity is denoted aptly by a cube which is the diagram yantra of that center the consciousness of that center as devata is also aptly borne on an elephant the massive solidity of which is emblematical of the solid earth principle prithvi the forces which go to the making of the solid matter may by the yogi be seen as yellow it may be that particular substance as dhatu of the body and particular vritti qualities are connected with particular chakras and so forth there are however another class of details which have possibly only symbolical reality and which are placed before the sadhaka for the purposes of instructions and meditation only the letters as we know them that is as outer speech are manifested only after passing through the throat they cannot therefore exist as such in the chakras but they are said to be there they are there not in their gross but in their subtle and causal forms it is these subtle forms which are called matrika but as such forms they are shabda of and are ideating movements or are the cause thereof consciousness which is itself swarupa soundless nih shabda in its supreme form para shabda assumes a general undifferentiated movement samanya spanda then a differentiated movement vishesha spanda issuing in clearly articulate speech spashta tara spanda the inner movement has outer correspondence with that issuing from the lips by the aid of dhvani this is but the mantra way of saying that consciousness moves as a shakti and appears as a subject shabda and object ardha at first in the subtle form of mind and its contents generated by the samskaras and and, and then in the gross form of language as the expression of ideas and of physical objects artha which the creative or cosmic mind projects into the world of sensual experience to be the source of impressions to the individual experiencer therein 
it is true that in this sense the letters are hidden <coughs> it is true that it is true that in this sense the letters as hidden speech or the seed of outer speech are in the chakras but the allocation of particular letters to particular chakras is a matter which if it has a real and not merely symbolical significance must receive the explanation given in my shakti and shakta in each of the chakras there is also a bija seed mantra of each of the tatvas therein they are the seed of the tatva for the later springs from re-enters for the later springs from and re-enters the former the natural name of anything is the sound which is produced by the action of the moving forces which constitute it he therefore it is said who mentally and vocally utters with creative force the natural name of anything brings into being the thing which bears that name thus ram is the beach of fire in the manipura chakra this mantra ram is said to be the expression in gross sound vaikari shabda of the subtle sound produced by the forces constituting fire the same explanation is given as regards as regards lam in the muladhara and the other bijas in the other chakras the mere utterance however of ram or any other mantra is nothing but a movement of the lips when however the mantra is awakened prabuddha that is when there is mantra chaitanya mantra consciousness then the sadhaka can make the mantra work thus in the case cited the vaikari shabda through its vehicle dhvani is the body of a power of consciousness which enables the mantrin to become the lord of fire however this may be in all cases it is the creative thought which ensouls the uttered sound which works now in man's small magic just as it first worked in the grand magical display of the world creator his thought was the aggregate with creative power of all thought each man is shiva and can attain each man is shiva and can attain high power to the degree of his ability to consciously realize himself as such for various purposes the devatas are invoked invoked mantra and devata are one and the same a mantra devata is shabda and artha the former being the name and the later the devata whose name it is by practicing japa with the mantra the presence of the devata is invoked japa or repetition of mantra is compared to the action of a man shaking a sleeper to wake him up the two lips are shiva and shakti this movement is the cohesion of the two shabda which issues therefrom is in the name nature of seed or bindu the devata thus produced is as it were the son of the sadhaka it is not the supreme devata for it is actionless who appears but in all cases an emanation produced by the sadhaka for his benefit only in the case of worshippers of shiva a boy shiva bal shiva appears who is then made strong by the nurture which the sadhaka gives to his creation the occultist will understand all such symbolism to mean that the devata is a form of consciousness of sadhaka which the later arouses and strengthens and gains good thereby it is his consciousness which becomes the boy shiva and when strengthened the full grown divine power itself all mantras are in the body as forms of consciousness vijnana roopa when the mantra is fully practiced it enlivens the samskara and the artha appears to the mind mantras are thus a form of the samskara of jivas the artha of which becomes manifest to the consciousness which is fit to perceive it the essence of all this is concentrate and vitalize thought and will power but for such a purpose a method is necessary namely language and determined variety varieties of practice according to the end sought these man these mantra vidya which explains what mantra is also enjoins the causal state of shabda is called shabda brahman 
दट इज द ब्रह्मन एज द कॉज ऑफ शब्द एंड अर्थ द अनमैनिफेस्ट आयकता पवर और शब्द विच इज द कॉज ऑफ मैनिफेस्टेड शब्द एंड अर्थ अप्राइज ऑन द डिफरेंशिएशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम बिंदु फ्रॉम प्रकृति इन द फॉरम ऑफ बिंदु थ्रू द प्रिवेलेंस ऑफ क्रिया शक्ति अव्यक्त रावा और शब्द अनमैनिफेस्टेड साउंड इज द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ साउंड एज सच नाद मंत्र दट इज अनडिफरेंशिएटेड साउंड नॉट स्पेशलाइज्ड इन द फॉरम ऑफ लेटर्स बट विच इज थ्रू क्रिएटिव एक्टिविटी द कॉज ऑफ मैनिफेस्टेड शब्द एंड अर्थ इट इज द ब्रह्मन कंसिडर्ड एज ऑल परवेडिंग शब्द अनडिवाइडेड अनमैनिफेस्टेड हूज सब्सटेंस इज नादा एंड बिंदु द प्रॉक्सीमेट क्रिएटिव इम्पल्स इज परा शिवा एंड प्रॉक्सीमेट कॉज ऑफ मैनिफेस्टेड शब्द एंड अर्थ इट इज द इटरनल पार्टलेस स्पोटा विच इज नॉट डिस्टिंग्विश्ड इन टू शब्द एंड अर्थ बट इज द पावर बाय विच बोथ एग्जिस्ट एंड आर नोन शब्द ब्रह्मा इज दस द काइनेटिक आइडिएटिंग एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द अनडिफरेंशिएटेड सुप्रीम कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ फिलासफी एंड द सगुन ब्रह्मा ऑफ रिलीजियन इट इज चित शक्ति वेहिकल्ड बाय अनडिफरेंशिएटेड प्रकृति शक्ति दट इज द क्रिएटिव एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द वन ब्रह्मन हु इज बोथ ट्रांसेंडेंट एंड फॉर्मलेस निर्गुणा एंड इमेनेंट एंड विथ एंड विथ फॉर्म सगुना एज द हठ योगा प्रदीपिका सेस वॉट एवर इज हर्ड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ साउंड इज शक्ति द एब्सॉर्ब स्टेट लया ऑफ द तत्वास इवॉल्यूट्स ऑफ प्रकृति इज दट इन विच नो फॉर्म एग्जिस्ट्स सो लॉन्ग एज देर इज द नोशन ऑफ ईथर सो लॉन्ग इज साउंड हर्ड द साउंडलेस इज कॉल्ड परब्रह्मा और परमात्मा शब्द ब्रह्मा दस प्रोजेक्ट्स इट सेल्फ फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ क्रिएशन इन टू सू टू सेट्स ऑफ मूवमेंट्स नेमली फर्स्टली द शब्द विथ मेंटल वाइब्रेशन ऑफ कॉग्नेशन which passes through the vocal organs becomes articulate sound and secondly ardha movements denoted by shabda in the form of all things constituting the content of mind and the objective world these two are emanations from the same conscious activity shakti which is the word vak or logos and are in consequence essentially the same hence the connection between the two is permanent it is in the above sense that the universe is said to be composed of the letters it is the 50 letters of the sanskrit alphabet which are denoted by the garland of severed human heads which the naked mother kali dark like a lightning rain coat wears as she stands amidst bones and carrion breasts and birds in the burning ground on the white corpse like sarva roopa body of shiva for it is she who slaughters that is withdraws all speech and it objects it into herself at the time of the dissolution of all things mahapralaya shabda brahman is the consciousness chaitanya in all creatures it assumes the form of kundalini and abides in the body of all breathing creatures prani manifesting itself by letters in the form of prose and verse in the sexual symbolism of shakti tantras seed bindu issued upon the reversed union of mahakala and mahakali which seed ripening in the womb of prakriti issued as kundalini in the form of the letters akshara kundalini as mahamatrika sundari has 51 coils which are the matrikas or subtle forms of the gross letters or varna which is the vaikhari form of the shabda at the centers kundalini when with one coil is bindu with two prakriti purusha with three the three shaktis ichcha gnana and kriya and three gunas sattva rajas and tamas with three and a half she is then actually creative with vikriti with four she is the devi ekajata and so on to srimat srimat कोटपरिपटि सुंदरी श्रीमत कोटपटि सुंदरी विथ फिफ्टी वन कॉयल्स इन द बॉडी अनमैनिफेस्टेड पराशब्द इज इन कुंडलिनी शक्ति 
that which first issues from it is in the lowest chakra and extends upwards through the rest as pashyanti madhyama and vaikari shabda when shakti first sees she is paramakala in the mother form ambika rupa which is supreme speech para vak and supreme peace parama shanta she sees the manifested shabda from pashyanti to vaikari the pashyanti state of shabda is that in which icha shakti will in the form of a god ankusha kara is about to display the universe then is seed bija form this is the shakti vama madhyama vak which is gnana knowledge and in the form of a straight line rujureka is jeshta shakti here there is the first assumption of form as the matrika matrikatvam upapanna for here is a particular motion vishesha spanda the vaikari state is that of the kriya shakti who is the devi raudri whose form is a triangle and that of a universe as the former shakti produces the subtle letters of matrika which are the vasana so this last is the shakti of the gross letters of words and their objects these letters are the garland of the mother issuing from her in her form as kundalini shakti and absorbed by her in the kundalini yoga here described chapter 4 completed sri matre namaha